I want to welcome everyone to this regular meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. It is Monday, April 8th, 2002. Could we have the municipal clerk call the roll, please? Chairman Swift Kayata. Here. Councilor Berry. Here. Councilor Carson. Councilor Fritz. Here. Councilor Lynch. Here. Councilor McGinty. Here. Councilor Roberts. Here. And Manager McGovern. Here. And our municipal clerk. Present. Thank could you. We, could we explain maybe the absence of... Uh, uh, Councillor yes. Carson. Councillor Carson is uh, attending a meeting over at the cafetorium of um, uh, having to do with student participation fees that the school department is, is contemplating. So she is over there listening on all our behalf. Well, most of us just came from there. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, God, well, our first item on our agenda is a presentation, um, and it has to do with the drama program at the high school. So there's a lot of people out there. I don't. If you want to all come up to the podium, I'll be down there. Or why don't you come up here so everybody out in TV land can see you? <laughs> Face out that way. <laughs> Gotta get Mr. Mullen up here too. <laughs> Can't wait, can't stop. <laughs> Miss you, Mr. Mullen. Well, I want to um, congratulate all of you. I will read this town council proclamation. Um, <clears throat> Whereas the 2001 production of Alice in Wonderland was a community-wide event drawing hundreds of Cape residents, especially our youngest citizens, to the high school for this spectacle of classical literature. And whereas 60 students, one-tenth of the students at the high school, participated in this show, Developing School Spirit, and whereas Alice in Wonderland won top honors in the annual Maine High School One Act Festival and represented Maine at the New England, where it was also a top show winning in this three-step process from regionals to states to New England, commendations in all aspects of theater, design, costuming, lights, sound, ensemble, and many awards for individual performers. And thus, Alice was the top show of 80 produced in Maine and among the top of 300 produced in New England. And whereas the high school theater program continues in the tradition of outreach to all of the community. Therefore, be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that we here, hereby congratulate the Alice in Wonderland cast and crew, their parents, and all others whose talents helped lead to this honor. And it's dated this eighth day of April, 2002. And I want to congratulate you. I went to that production, and it was wonderful, as have been all the productions I've seen that you guys have done. So congratulations. I don't know if you have someone in particular you want to receive this on behalf of the team. We don't have Alice. Well, Alice, step <laughs> forward. Congratulations. Very well. would, would Alice or Mr. Mullen or anyone else like to say anything? Put those drama school uh, talents to use. I'm not pretty shy. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, all. Uh, thanks particularly uh, to the community for the wonderful support that we've enjoyed over the years. Uh, this is uh, but a small part of those uh, people who worked on Alice in Wonderland. Uh, many have graduated, but this is a pretty good representation. And I particularly want to recognize those people who work in tech. Today they put on masks, but much of the success of our program is dependent upon the technical people who are uh, working on the show. 
And uh, I would not want to lose this opportunity to tell you that the uh, show that we're presently working on is another spectacle. It is The King and I, and I, as a matter of fact, can introduce you to The King and the I uh, here, the Anna. But let's let uh, Alice speak first. She's also the Anna, and then I'll show you The King. Okay, thank you. Um, I know that on behalf of the whole cast and all the crew, we are very honored to receive this award. And we thank all the community support, and we worked really hard, and we continue to do so. And so thank you very much. And if I may, just to plug our show, <laughs> The King and I. Uh, the King, if he'll take his uh, hat off and just set, step forward, Matt Walsh is going to be playing The King, and here is our Anna, and many of these people are also in the show. Thank you. Great. Mr. Mullen, while you are plugging the King and I, can you tell me so I can relay to our audience what days the performances are on? Um, they are May 30th, 31st, June 1st, and 2nd. We'll do a lot of publicity on it, and they particularly want to name senior citizens because we rather love it. May 30th, 31st, June 1st, and 2nd. So be there. It'll be a great show like they always are. Thank Thanks you. So much. <coughs> That's one of the best parts of being chairman. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll wait just a moment till they exit. <laughs> okay, it's time for reports and correspondence. Councillor Roberts, I see you waving your hand. Yes, I, thank you. I had two or three things, but I'm going to condense it somewhat because I know we all want to get back to that meeting. But I just had to rep at least mention that my wife was totally taken in by the Cape Courier April Fool's <laughs> joke again this year. And uh, <laughs> she was opposed to the idea, but I have actually had a lot of people who thought some of those ideas weren't that bad. <laughs> so for what it's worth, sorry, Sherry. <clears throat> the, and on a less positive note, the school board is meeting tonight uh, on this participation fee. I was really just kind of disappointed that they scheduled it on an evening when the school, the council was meeting because there were a lot of us that wanted to be there and we had to get up in the middle and leave. So I would hope in the future maybe they would think about uh, what else is going on in town when they schedule these things and let, so that we can all be involved in them, uh, that we, there is interest from the council. Thank you. Anyone else uh, with reports or correspondence? Uh, the uh, Tom Good subcommittee met and uh, considered one application and we handled that result. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, just to add on um, to what I said before, there is a meeting taking place at, at this very moment over at the cafetorium at the middle school. It has to do with the, the challenges that the school board is facing due to the loss of $435,000 of state aid to education that this community will not be receiving from the state and they are facing um, a pickle I guess you could say in terms of how they are going to try to make up that money um, so I wish them well with their challenges if if anyone watching has any good ideas for the school board um, or the town council but the school board on the school budget the town council on the municipal budget for uh, ways to either save money or raise revenue, I'm sure we would all appreciate hearing them. So thank you very much. Madam Chairman, yes, I, th I think Robert. perhaps where we've got a quorum here that I might go and join uh, Councillor Carson if no one else minds. Do you want to wait till after the follow road item or are you fine with that? All right, sure. <laughs> Okay, I think <laughs> Councillor Roberts is going to excuse himself after our first item. Um, should we do the town manager's report, or do you want to do that first item Whatever before you'd then? Why don't, we, why don't we do three? Actually, if the council doesn't mind, I'll do the manager's report at the end of the meeting. Okay, that sounds fine. Is there any citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda? 
Hearing none, we'll move forward. We're going to try and go through this agenda pretty quickly tonight, everyone, so uh, some of us can get back to that meeting. Um, do I hear a motion on the minutes of our meetings held March 11th and April 1st? I move uh, to adopt the minutes as were printed in our package. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? That's the March and the April 1st meeting? Yes. Yes, the March 11th and the April 1st meetings. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Item number 103, um, having to do with the Fowler Road project. Mr. Manager, would you like to yes, it is. comment? Everyone knows the condition of Fowler Road is less than ideal. We've been looking at a number of alternatives, mm -hmm. have come across some obstacles along the way. What we'd like to do is to share those with the residents in the area and have a public forum and a council vote at your May 13th meeting. So I would ask that you uh, schedule a public forum on the Fowler Road Improvement Project for your May 13th meeting and that proper notices be sent to all those in the neighborhood. So moved. Second. It's been moved and everyone's quick on the draw tonight. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, let's move the question. All in favor of uh, setting the public forum for May 13th? It's unanimous. Thank you. And Councillor Roberts will be leaving us at this moment. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Um, item number 104, a report from the Ordinance Committee regarding off-site parking. Councillor Lynch is the chair of the Ordinance Committee. Would you like to introduce this? Uh, thank you. Um, the background on this issue is that the Inn by the Sea has um, requested that the zoning ordinance be changed to permit off-site parking. Um, apparently, uh, the inn has inadequate parking uh, for certain functions, generally weddings held during the summer, as I'm led to believe. Um, the inn um, is prepared to make arrangements with another facility uh, off-site, I think potentially St. Bartholomew's, to um, hold off-site parking for inn functions. Um, in order to do this, though, the zoning ordinance needs to be changed. The Ordinance Committee met on March 19th. We reviewed uh, a proposal, uh, made a few changes, and are now recommending that the proposed amendment be scheduled for public hearing at our May meeting. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Lynch. Um, <clears throat> do I hear a motion? Move that... Um Public hearing be set for the off-site parking amendment to the ordinance um, for May 13th. It's been moved and seconded. Is uh, yes. Comment. Council McGinty. Yes. Um, just that this also affects the town center district. That the B, the BA and the BB. It's not just the in by the sea that's affects. It could potentially have effect on other parts of town. Just wanted to. Yes. Declare. Thank you. I appreciate. And that. I also like to say it's. I thought I, I, I commented to uh, Maureen when we were, I got there a little bit early for that meeting, and it sounds relatively easy, but we spent two, two hours mm -hmm. hashing this, this, these three paragraphs, four paragraphs over. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we looked at this every which way. I just wanted to say that it looks easy on paper, but we spent a lot of time working on this. These things are always extremely tricky to make sure you're doing what you think you're doing and not doing something different. Absolutely. Councillor Barry. Is there any problem with spot zoning? Was that argument raised and disposed of? No, that argument wasn't raised. Oh. Then I guess there's no problem. It, um, in fact, and it's not spot zoning. It, as uh, Councillor McGinty suggests, it will apply to certain districts in their entirety. Okay. Great. Good. I want to thank the Ordinance Committee because I'm sure this was a, a difficult task to hammer out exactly um, how this should be. So uh, we've... Have we had the motion? Yes, the motion and the and second. Motion and it's been seconded. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Now, item number 105. Um, this has to do with establishing a refuse materials planning committee. Councilor McGovern? I mean, sorry, excuse me, <laughs> Manager McGovern. Yes, the. Council has previously discussed this at a finance committee meeting. It's proposed to have a committee of nine persons, uh, four of whom would be town councilors and recycling committee members, and five citizens at large. The committee 
would be reviewing and considering all aspects of refuse and unwanted materials handling in Cape Elizabeth. And in reviewing any proposal or suggestion, the committee would take into consideration the effects on the environment, service delivery, cost impacts upon citizens and other service users, and the, the opinions and input of citizens. And although it's proposed that the committee complete its work by December 31, 2002, it's recognized as with all committees uh, that the council will look for due deliberation and forward progress on this issue. Thank you very much. Do I hear a motion? A move establishment of the Refuse Materials Planning Committee. Second. Second. I moved and seconded. Any comments or discussion? I, I would just ask to um, people who are here tonight and home viewers, if this is um, adopted, if anyone is interested in serving as a citizen member of this committee to uh, please let the Town Council Appointments Committee or the town manager know um, because I know that this will be created very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? No? Then all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Um, item number 106 has to do with proposed use of Fort Williams Park. And we ha really, we have 106, 107, and 108, which all have to do with proposed uses of Fort Williams Park. How would the council feel about taking these all together? That's appropriate. Fine. Fine. Okay. Do we need to? I'd, I'd move approval of all three. Second. They're moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? Oh, can can we just read what it is oh. so that uh, people who are at home and Council. those who may not have an agenda. Councilor Lynch, please, please do so. Thank you. Um, so the uh, motion would be to um, approve the use of Fort Williams Park for Little League season um, this spring and summer, to approve the use of the um, Fort Williams Park for the high school graduation on June 9th, to approve the use of Fort Williams Park for school field days on June, I guess it's June 5th through the 7th. Yes. And then uh, that's it. Thank you very much. That was good to clarify that. Um, I moved and seconded. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Five zero. <coughs> Moving along. Uh, although I wonder if I should have recused myself. I have a little leaguer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you can be unbiased. I'll just state for the re <laughs> record. Are you making any money off of it? Yeah, not? exactly. I'm not. I got uh, any okay. financial you interest? You lose money with yeah. all the boosters. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> good, good clarification, Councilor McGinty. <laughs> okay, item number 109. This has to do with a request from Councilor Berry. Um, would you like to introduce this, Councilor Berry? Yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Um, uh, yeah, come to my attention that the key bank which uh, uh, handles the uh, Cape Elizabeth town account for payroll has initiated a practice of charging a fee of five dollars for cashing each check drawn on the key bank by a key bank depositor and payable to the order of a person or entity not having an account with the key bank. I'm not aware that any other banks, any other commercial banks in the area are doing that. And <clears throat> Cape Elizabeth has approximately 260 school employees and approximately 90 municipal employees who receive paychecks uh, for their work for the town. And so uh, I think this is uh, inappropriate. That is, uh, if I got a $100 paycheck from the town drawn on the key bank and I went to cash it to get money for my $100 paycheck, they would take $5 of it or 5% of my... No, in, in that instance, 5%. Uh, a $5 fee for cashing a check drawn on that bank, I believe, is, is inappropriate. And so I'm proposing a motion, which I've placed before you all, <coughs> uh, as follows. The Cape Elizabeth Town Council, I, I move uh, that this be enacted, that uh, the Cape Elizabeth Town Council hereby directs the town manager or his delegate to conduct a survey of commercial banks doing business in the greater Portland, Maine area to determine which one of them, which ones of them, if any, are charging a fee for cashing checks drawn on their own bank by persons or entities not having an account in their bank. 
the manager shall report back to the town council at the May meeting of the town council. Uh, I, I make that motion now. And I'll second it. Been in, excuse me? I'll second it. Thank you. I, I've been informed by the, the manager tonight that, uh, uh, <clears throat> and I guess he sent me an email which uh, got by me. I've, I've received about 50 pounds of email this week. <laughs> and uh, that, that he does say that the representative of uh, the bank uh, had contacted him to say that they are reconsidering their policy of charging this $5 fee for each check. So I think that if uh, this motion is uh, <clears throat> acted on, that the manager or his delegate, whoever he selects, can uh, just find out uh, if anybody else is charging a $5 fee for cashing a check drawn on their own bank, and uh, then the council can take appropriate action in the May uh, meeting after we get a report back. Thank you very much. Yep. Been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Uh, I just wonder if we should amend the motion to say that if the fee, in fact, is uh, waived or gotten rid of, that the town manager need only report that back and not have to go and conduct a survey. Well, we can find that out. I think. And, and, you know. Do do we want to? Do you want to amend your motion so that if if the fee is indeed waived by the current bank that the manager would not have to go through the, the surveying? If we get it in writing. <laughs> if we get it in writing. Okay. If the manager gets it in writing? Correct. And you're okay on seconding that? Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? No? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, item number 110. 111 and 112 all have to do with our elections, and I would like our municipal clerk, Deborah Lane, to introduce them, please. Great, thank you. The first would be to appoint members to the Voter Registration Appeals Board, which is basically a board that reviews decisions of the registrar. They have never convened. I don't anticipate they would, but we certainly would need to have that board just in, in case that instance came up. The second would be to sign the election warrant for May 7th. Tuesday, May 7th is the election of the council and school board. Uh, the warrant calls for the polls to be open from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. in the high school gymnasium. I will just mention <coughs> absentee ballots are now available for anyone wishing to vote an absentee ballot. And the third would be uh, something we do in every general election year, which would be to appoint the election clerks, which are nominated um, by the major political parties, so that I would um, recommend that you appoint the election clerks as they are listed on the uh, agenda this evening. Thank you very much. Do I hear a motion on these three, if we would like to take them together? I move that item, let me see, 110, 111, 112 be um, moved as proposed by her. I second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Uh, I would like to Council just uh, mention as we um, vote on signing the election warrant for May 7th that Cape Elizabeth continues to have um, a May election for municipal officials, which uh, I think is increasingly out of step with surrounding communities. So I would just like to use this opportunity to ask the public if they have views on this issue, if they would email um, or uh, contact us and let us know their views as we try and review these issues in the future. Thank you very much. Any further discussion or comments? Councilor McGinty. I would just say that I don't think the table is without a step <laughs> with this. And I don't want to get into a debate, but I just want to throw the other side out there. And I would and certainly, I'm just and I would seeking certainly enjoy the public's the public. views. That's, I'm just seeking the public's views on it because if the public thinks that May elections is the way to go, far be it for me to that's fine. Suggest another day. I would like to join in Councillor McGinty's. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I, I guess the public can tell that there has been some division, um, on, the division on the council on this issue, and in fact, there has been no formal vote on it by the by the council. But in in uh, informal discussions during the budget process, it has come to light that as a budget item, um, it was a 4-3 vote to. Uh, not vote. It was a 4-3 opinion, the opinion of four councillors to retain yeah. the May election and the opinion of three to move it to November. So keep those cards and letters and emails coming. <laughs> we we'll be greatly interested to hear what you have to say out there. Thank you very much. 
Um, so it's been moved and seconded. Uh, did you have a Well, I just wondered whether um, for the nominations to the Registration Appeals Board, whether we should indicate that the John Walker would be the regular person and Shank the alternate for Democratic uh, Party and Republican Party, Reed Jones. Reed Jones and, and John I assume Reed John Reed is alternate. alternate. Thank you. Right? Yes. Yep. Thank you very much. Um, with that clarified, all in favor? unanimous thank you okay moving on to item number 113 which has to do with the restructuring of the Maine Municipal Employees Health Trust Mr. McGovern would you like to introduce this yes the Maine Municipal Employees Health Trust covers uh, most of our municipal employees uh, with health insurance coverages it's been governed primarily uh, under the federal ERISA acts the Federal Employment Retirement Income Security Act of 1983 that's subsequently amended. Uh, they're proposing that instead of being subject to ERISA requirements, that they instead be subject to the state MIWA law, uh, which is the main employer's welfare arrangement. Uh, this is something that the, that the Health Trust is proposing to all of its uh, various members, and uh, I would recommend that the, we remain with the main Municipal Employees Health Trust and for the, the foreseeable future. And in order to do that, we need to go along with this uh, legal restructuring. So I would encourage you to uh, uh, consider as read and to authorize uh, me to sign all the documents as proposed in the sample articles and the agreements. Do I hear a motion? Councillor? I, I have a question. Um, I'm a bit concerned about the change in the joint and several liability and that we, under the current, if I'm understanding correctly, under what we, it's the way it's currently written, we would be responsible if we went over our uh, charges for liability for our town employees' health coverage. In the way it's being rewritten, we would jointly have to pay more if the whole system went over its expenditures. Um, is are we are we getting a good enough deal on the health insurance for our employees to make up for that heavier liability? Would you like to address that, Mr. McGovern? Uh, y yes, Madam Chairman, uh, Councillor Fritz. I I don't consider myself to be an expert on the, I this don't on this area and. <laughs> Uh, although, you know, I do have a lot of faith in the trustees who, you know, have extensively reviewed this issue, uh, led by Don Garrish, the manager in Brunswick, uh, Osbonzi, and some other very uh, responsible individuals. Uh, out of all the municipalities who have ever left the health trust, they've all tried to get back in a year later. They've realized that the grass is not greener elsewhere. Uh, so, to, to answer your question, I do think it's valuable enough that we should uh, uh, take that risk, limited though it may be, uh, in order to continue with this, uh, this trust that has served us so well in its various forms since uh, the early 1970s. Um, Councillor Lynch. I, I had a concern as, as well, Mike. Um, this is obviously a complicated area. And I guess my request would be to table this at least till next month unless um, it presents an insurmountable problem to you. I, I noticed that the documents do, don't have to be returned until December 1st, right. 2002. And um, I would just feel more comfortable having more time than I've had to have, I've had over the weekend since I got the package to look at this. And, really make sure that this is the best thing for town employees and the town taxpayers as well. So make that a motion, I'll second it. I'd like to move to table this till next month. I'd second that. Mr. McGovern. Yes, Madam Chairman, I I have no objection to the motion and it was a motion to table so it's not really not debatable. That's right. <laughs> uh, however I, I I would why don't you vote on the motion then I want to say something. Okay. Okay, there's a motion that has been made and seconded to table this item. To, until next, our next meeting next month, correct? Um, any discussion? All those in favor? No discussion. It's, it's unanimous. 
Sorry. With, with, with your indulgence, Madam Chairman, I'd oh, just okay. like to ask that councillors review this in the next week, mm -hmm. and if you have any questions, if you could submit them in writing, so that otherwise we'd be here next month with, with, mm -hmm. with still with my limited right. expertise, and yes. we wouldn't be any further ahead. So that, if that you have would, questions, if you could submit them in writing, I'll that write would give the manager. manager time to get any answers from anybody he needed to get answers. From. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, that's been tabled until our next meeting in May. Um, item number 114, which has to do with the replacement of the wet team van. Mr. McGovern, would you like to address this? Yeah, this is an issue that the council reviewed a week ago at, uh, as a committee of the whole, as the finance committee. The wet team van is in dire need of replacement. It's rusting, probably won't have it. Uh, obtain another inspection sticker. We do have $20,000 currently available in the fire truck repair account, and the wet team has also, uh, from their private uh, wet team company funds, agreed to provide sufficient funds to purchase a new uh, van that will uh, greatly serve the needs of the wet team. If you have any specific questions, the fire chief is here, uh, Captain Joe Mokri of the, as well as Captain Joe Mokri of the wet team, and. Uh, another representative of the wet team, if you have any detailed questions, but I'd recommend that you approve the purchase of the new van uh, with 20000 allocated to the fire truck repair account to graciously accept the donation of the wet team funds. So moved. And it's been moved? Second. So I hear it's been moved and seconded. Um, discussion? I have a question right. just for clarification. That money is to come out of the fiscal 02, the current year's budget. Not proposed not the proposed budget that's coming up. Um, did anyone else have questions or comments? Yeah, Council yes, Barry? Where do the uh, funds come from for the wet team? The wet team uh, is the gracious recipient of funds from the Lobster Shack, Councilor Barry. Uh, there's a wishing well there uh, that citizens, very, uh, citizens and visitors to the Lobster Shack throw money into, and uh, that raises uh, some funds per year and plus uh, other individuals have given the money, but particularly through the good graces of Jim Ledbetter, who owns that little uh, shop there uh, next to the Lobster Shack, uh, we've received quite a bit of money. Any further questions? Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much, and thank you for coming and sitting through our meeting. <laughs> And thank you also for the great job that you do on the wet team for the community, not just for Cape Elizabeth, but for other communities that you help out too. It's a very, a very important service. And I just want to thank you on behalf of the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. We appreciate it. Okay, moving on. Item number 115, which has to do with a, a speaker system at the new Lions field, ball field. Mr. McGovern. Yes, the, the Little League's requested this and I had raised some concern with them about the impact on the adjacent neighborhood and I would like to recommend that you approve this but conditional upon uh, complaints not being received uh, on the noise levels and if, if complaints should be received that the issue would need to be revisited by the town council. Okay, do I hear... Could I raise a point of order here? Yes. The, the correspondence we says uh, they want to come before the April meeting, which this is, to get your apparel on uh, the following. <laughs> I think they mean approval. I noticed that too. I, I hope that's what they mean because I'm not providing any apparel. <laughs> no. <this motion. clears throat> and also it says uh, didn't want to exceed the uh, decimal levels. I think it means decibel levels. Isn't that uh, yes. so appropriate noted. Uh, amendment? As usual, you are correct. Well, thank you, you Madam are Chairman. Excellent on the details. Thank you. Councilor McGinty. I'm trying to think back to 1996 when we voted on these fields. I think we voted on both the Fort Williams and this field at the same time, if I'm not mistaken. And I believe, was there a, a finding or a requirement that there would be no lights or speakers at these fields? Mr. McGovern? Yeah. I asked Ms. O'Mara to look at the planning board approval process. Uh, particularly, I didn't ask her to look, for, this only applies to Lionsville, I didn't ask her to look at the Fort Williams one. Right. But there was no specific note on the plan for the new Lionsfield that addressed this. 
other than there was a requirement that the use not increase the decibel levels. There was no specific prohibition against speakers. I thought that there might be, and she reviewed it and found that there was not. Could you, could you clarify what you mean by that the use does not increase the decibel levels? The, the use of the yeah. field yeah, would, would not increase the levels over not using the field? No. What, what you do with, with decibel readouts is you look at what is the decibel reading at a certain point. Yes. And while in the immediate field area itself, it will increase that, the concern would be the decibel level increasing around the uh, sort the of the, the, the recipient yeah. end. Okay. I just have a concern because I know this came up with the neighbors down there in Wildwood. I know mm. this was an issue yeah. um, and what impact that new field would have. And, and I know we talked about configuring the fields, how we would do it and all that. And I'm wondering if we maybe would want to get some input from the neighbors before we act on this and see if anybody has any concerns. Mr. McGovern. Yeah, you know, it's been a tradition for opening day that they're allowed to use the speaker. What I would suggest is that you do give permission for April 27th, and if you're inclined to get further input, you know, the, that, you know, we, we solicit that input. I, I don't know if we, you know, it gets expensive on every issue that comes up to send, but maybe we could send a letter to the Wildwood Association and ask them to solicit their members. Uh, particularly, we could send a letter up before the 27th, say that, you know, listen to it that day and see if you have any concerns. Yeah, I don't have a problem with opening day, a you know, one-time deal, that's fine. But I just remember this being an issue, and I hate for us to just gloss over it, you know, five years, six years later, or whatever. I had a similar concern about what did the neighbors think and had they been solicited. So I would be interested in approving the opening day speaker, but then holding off until we have some input from the others. Mm -hmm. Councillor Lynch. I am going to raise again whether I should recuse myself, and I, I don't say it frivolously, but I do have a little leaguer who is playing on Lions Field and is participating in the program. So um, I realize it doesn't amount to the kind of financial conflict of interest that we often have before us, but uh, I just raise that and ask for some guidance here. Any other councillors have any comments? Mm -hmm. Councillor Fritz? If, this were, if the small speaker system were purchased, would the intent be to have it every Saturday and between what hours and... Um, um, through you, Madam Chairman. The under, my understanding of the intent is they, if they have the speaker system, uh, they're asking for permission to use it for every single game. Which is weeknights and weekends, and whenever whenever there's a game. The little league system, right. which is a uh, season, right. which is spring and early summer. Because I mean, the sound really does carry. I I can hear the speakers yeah. in you know where I am, which is way across 77. Um, on that one day or the two days, and and that seems to be something that you know you can sort of put up. With but when it's considerably more often, I really do think we should um, seek people input who, who are a lot closer. I mean, there's quite a few neighbors in that vicinity, so. Thank you, Councillor Fritz. Does anyone else on the council, I'd like to just address Councillor Lynch's concern uh, as whether anyone feels she has a conflict and should recuse herself. She, she has asked for advice from the council. Anybody have any comments? Uh, council the, Barry. the council rules, uh, I believe, say that each councilor shall vote on each uh, item unless uh, excused or recused That's right. uh, in the council rules. And I don't think that it's uh, uh, the conflict that I don't think that this situation is the type that is uh, contemplated by the rules as a conflict of interest on Council Lynch's pride. And besides, if she drops out, we're kind of getting close to a quarrel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so either, but in the interest of raising it in disclosure, and I will have one of those screaming <laughs> little leaguers more than one night a week in that field. So I, excuse me, I'm sorry. I um, appreciate you bringing it to everyone's attention, but I personally feel that this does not rise to the level of conflict of interest. Um, so I concur. I sense 
I see a general consensus from the rest of my counselors who are all to this side. So I think we're okay with you voting on this. Well, then having cleared myself of that, uh, I would say I also um, would want to consult with the neighbors because um, it could conceivably be six or seven days a week for about 10 weeks, and that's a long, and people have their windows open at that time of the year, so we need to check with neighbors. Do you have a noisy child? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the fifth. <laughs> Can, I, can I make a motion? That, yes, let's hear a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the use um, of a rental speaker on opening day, April 27th, yeah. and that we seek input from the Wildwood Association um, for their input on a more permanent system. Yeah. Yeah. Councilor I would think Brentwood would be included as well. The proposal, as I understand it, is to have it facing Brentwood, actually. Brentwood's pretty close. Brentwood <coughs> East. My geography's a little vague, but <laughs> Mr. McGovern yeah, wants to make uh, a Councilor comment. Fritz is right. Uh, it's very close. I haven't said a whole lot on this. I had, if you saw the whole email history of this, I had incurred Little League not to apply for the uh, permission to use the microphone, recognizing some of the concerns you have. They decided still to go forward with it. I'd like to have this similar to your, your vote on uh, the council on the council of Barry's proposal on the payroll check that if little league is willing to withdraw the request for uh the speakers for the rest of the games that we would not survey everyone rather than survey everyone because i can my sense is you know where this will go and i'd, I'd like to again encourage little league uh, that the best move might be not to go forward with the speaker i would modify my motion mm -hmm. to include whatever he just said and does the seconder, I can't remember who the seconder was, but... I think it was. Well, is, do we have a second for the I'll modified... The Thank you. Modified motion. Yeah. Thank you. I, I just go back and I just remember the, I mean, there was a horrendous issue, particularly the Fort Williams fields, and we went round and round with this. Well, that's right. And uh, yeah, I, I just remember it was a big issue, so... Don't know Park. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, the, the motion um, is basically to approve the rental for opening day April 27th to consult with uh, abutting residents um, or residential organizations about th whether it would be appropriate for the rest of the games if Little League withdraws the request uh, and lets the manager know then we'll just forget the solicitation of viewpoints. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Um, citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Hearing none, um, the manager's report. Yes, I'd very like to briefly report. Is the council's aware uh, you've been you've asked me to market 1226 Shore Road, the the former community center property. Uh, just this evening, prior to the council meeting, I received what I would consider to be a, a bona fide offer for the property. Uh, the person who's making the proposal is on a, uh, is on a very tight schedule in terms of uh, doing this or making some other arrangements. I would, uh, it is for a use that I think is very much in keeping with the town center. Mm. And I would propose the, that, and I've mentioned to the council chairman at the beginning of the meeting, that the council hold a special meeting tomorrow night in conjunction with its uh, uh, previously scheduled finance committee meeting to uh, consider this offer to see if you wish to make a counter offer and uh, to proceed from there. Thank you very much, Mr. McGovern. Do I hear a motion? I move that uh, we have a special meeting tomorrow night to consider this item. Do would, I that, would, would that be an executive session or not? If I would think that if you wish is wish to make counter offers, yes, it'd be appropriate yeah. for the, the, that discussion. But it, you still may have a public vote, uh, you know, you offering out, it depending on you start in public, yeah. go into executive right. session, right. and then and, come yeah, back because yeah. to yeah. announce and, whatever the vote was. And also, the individual will has indicated that uh, who's interested in purchasing has indicated will be here tomorrow night. So even if you know we want to make an offer, he might not be sitting in the executive session. And I could go out and have a discussion with him and then go back mm -hmm. in if you want to, to find her if you have any questions. I think it would be in the town's best interest to, uh, to 
to uh, have this property back on back the tax rolls as mm -hmm. early as possible. Mm -hmm. Do we need some sort of motion to do that or just to, I think, say that Henry, we Henry made a motion. On schedule it, special schedule it. It's okay. It's been moved and seconded. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, I would just like to announce before we adjourn, we have upcoming Town Council Finance Committee meetings. The next one is tomorrow evening, April 9th. These are open to the public. I would encourage anyone who is interested to come and find out more about your municipal budget. We'll be discussing the municipal budget, uh, various departments in that, but not yet the school budget. We have not received the school budget yet, just for clarification. And then our next meeting after that is April budget meeting is budget workshop is April 24th for those planning ahead. The council is also, a, I think there's a school board meeting tomorrow, so you'll probably be in the cafeteria since we usually leave that available for whoever's meeting in here in case they need an executive session. Okay. We'll wing it. <laughs> Perhaps we should um, identify all of the upcoming finance committee meetings. Sure, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to. Upcoming finance committee meetings are April 9th, April 24th, April 29th, which I believe is the first time we discuss, we are scheduled to discuss the school budget, um, May 2nd. Then we will have our regular May meeting, May 13th, and we will have a public hearing, if all goes according to plan, and adoption of the budget, May 28th. All those meetings are at 7.30 in the town council chambers, as far as we know, except tomorrow night will be in the cafeteria downstairs in this building. Thank you. A, a, a clarification, no meeting. I have this Thursday penciled in, no. Okay. For a workshop, no, we, okay. we've bagged that one. All right, good. Thank you. I move we Informal adjourn. Term. I second it. It's been moved and seconded. All in, uh, any discussion? None. All in favor? Opposed. Raise, raise that hand. <laughs> Unanimous. Thank you very much. <laughs>